There's a lot of time to get some free accidents. Yeah, so it's been a bunch of Thank you. <laughs> Good. All right. Awesome. Um, thank you, everybody, for coming in tonight. This is a really special uh, program and event in a very special space. And um, I want to just express my gratitude for being included in this event and being able to share um, the music that, that I make. Um, so my name is Velvet Penny. I make music to raise awareness around domestic violence and try to empower folks to find a way to express themselves um, and also um, be educated and know different ways that we can prevent um, violence from happening um, in our lives. So um, these songs are, uh, some of them are new, some of them are old, and some of them will be off of the upcoming album, All the Flowers. I'm waiting at
the dark space in your mind. Times it's quite nasty. The times when you Sit and listen to the shadows that follow you. Yeah, I know about that. You should know you're not alone. No, 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 you're not alone. Can we go somewhere together? Show tell our scars. Feel glad to own them and let peace do the part and do our blues. simply letting them know that you're their friend. So I invite you to pull out your phones and text somebody that you love, maybe somebody that you haven't talked to in a while or haven't heard from in a while, and just send them a little heart emoji or a smiley face or a flower. Let them know that you're thinking about them. Um, a lot of the times when people are in uh, hard situations, there is that sense of loneliness um, and sometimes it, it can really change a person's perspective to know that they have somebody in their support system. And that's something that we can do too, even if we're not going through something in particularly that's particularly hard at this time. Being able to identify who your friends are um, that you can lean on can really help you get out of the rut. Um, so this next song that I'm going to play is called uh, forever, it's the opening track to my upcoming album, All the Flowers, and uh, I'm really excited to play it for you. Here it goes. I'm gonna stand up for this one. Thank you. 
Most of all, it's an initiative to um, create safer domestic relationships. And one of the ways that I'm working on doing that is by 
providing programming, pre-programming to, um, to community members that come out to my art show from November to February at Casa Pitzer in Claremont. Um, and this, this programming is, uh, we have education workshops, we're having art workshops, and we're having um, wellness workshops so that people can become equipped with the tools to take care of themselves, to express themselves, and furthermore, um, be empowered by being educated. Um, and you can get just a little snippet of that by flipping through my scene over here and you can listen to my single all the flowers. So I think so. You feel so fun. Thank you. I'm going to turn it down a little bit. So um, this song I wrote a, a really long time ago and I just revisited it. Uh, just the other day, and um, it's probably one of the, the saddest songs that I've written, um, and one of the most vulnerable ones to share with folks. And it's about um, it's about well, I'll I'll just sing it for you. Oh, <laughs> 
what I want to explain. I ain't taking on no more pain. Like he's not your own baby. I'm gonna find my love and strength.
Thank you so much for having me and listening to my music. If you like my music, you can um, stay in touch with me. Uh, follow me on Instagram if that's your thing, or you can just talk to me. <laughs> um, and yeah, thank you all so much for being here tonight. Um, are you ready to come on up? You want to take a break? Okay, all right, let's give it up. Give it up again for Velvet Penny. That was beautiful. Yeah. Um, I also want to thank Kenzo for being here, of course, <laughs> and opening this wonderful place up to us. And for your artwork, thank you so much. Um, thanks, everybody, for being here. Welcome. My name is Melissa Banales. I'm also known as Missy Fuego. This is my new book, Root for the Underdog. Um, it's funny because everyone else asks me what this book is about, but it's really, it's about failure. And I think failure also means freedom. And I think that's the great thing about being an underdog is you're underestimated. <laughs> no one is expecting anything of you. So when you do succeed, it's pretty magical. Um, so I also needed it as a reminder to myself. <laughs> Root for the underdog. And I'm only going to read um, four poems, okay? Dig. I want to tell you about my grandmother and planting roses. How getting the soil just right for the seeds requires your whole body. Crouched, hunched, both hands, both arms, working, massaging, rotating. My abuelita didn't use a shovel. Just some water, her hands, patience. She waited for the ground to invite her. And when, her mud, and when her fingers slid through the mud, she went in. And in this story, I am 11 years old, and I go with her. Though it starts slow, it quickly gathers momentum. And there we are, pushing, sweating, all smells, all dark and thick. It's always an ugly business getting to something so beautiful, she would say. Can you turn the earth now? We keep going, my neck bent, my chest to the ground, I'll be honest with you. I was holding back then, because I was afraid to get dirty, afraid I wouldn't get the stains out of my knees, afraid to be surrounded, to be held. I didn't think I'd make it back from the mud. Effort, she whispered, keep going. The moment when the seeds could drop was so close and I wanted it to happen, but I didn't know if my hands could get the job done, but we kept going. And then I felt something give in my black girl chest and I pulled out, took a deep breath and heard my tita say, now just sit, just for a minute. I couldn't hear the freeway over my tita's house in North Hollywood or the wires buzzing with electricity or someone's favorite show or a phone call goodbye. I only remember the stop. It was so blue. And a small wind found my face. I want you to know this is how you make me feel. When I am up to my arms in you, when the whole of myself lets loose, can I put my chest to the altar of your heart? I am up to my arms in you, I'll be honest with you. I'm not holding back because only the brave are afraid to get lost. They live to be consumed, so let me get lost in you. Can you let me use both hands to see inside your pain, your past, your hurt, your desire, and write a different ending? I enjoy the dark, the quiet. It's always an ugly business getting to something so beautiful. I want you to know that I come from a long line of growers and I am not afraid to dig. Outstanding Balance, San Francisco, 2003. I do what I do best when I have no job and no money and no hope. I write a poem. 
I have paid lots of money to institutions in order to do this. I have paid no money, but I've given up everything in order to do this. I've tried reasoning with the phone company, the credit card company, and my loan officers. I try to negotiate with them through trade. I will write a poem, a nice poem. I won't use bad words or say how they make me want to kill myself. I'll lie so well that my readers will think I'm telling the truth and will like what they see. If only they could let me. But they only know a language of currency. They speak in dollars and dream about the things they will buy when I pay them. They talk to me in fragments and numbers and remind me that they possess contracts and collectors and lawyers and lots of other important people who are going to make me pay. They're not interested in my poem. And since everyone thinks they're a poet, they look at my offer like a sack of sewage on their front door. It stinks, they say, and it's taking up space. Just send the check in the mail, they persist. We just need a signature, they say. You can keep the poems. Just send us the signature. Then we can get this whole thing cleared up. Thank you. This is So I was born and raised in Los Angeles. I don't know if any of you are. Uh, yeah, I don't know. If you're a transplant, welcome. It's home. Uh, this city is wild. It's even wilder when you have five generations of your family from here. <laughs> so I would have to say I've probably heard everything. And um, this is, you know, I don't want to stereotype, but this is a snapshot. When people try to ask me, like, what is that like we're in the 70s and 80s? really coming of age in the 90s. I mean, I just remember everything being very, um, almost like statements. Does that make sense? Like there was no room for feelings and there was no room for reflection. It's just everything that happened was a reaction or a statement. And so what I wanted to do was I wanted to write a poem that focused on conjunctions, which are the words and and but. Conjunctions, Los Angeles, California, 1984. And then there was Chubana's father, who was back from prison, only two days out, and he was back to breaking her mother's nose. She was back to running away from him. Chubana was back to knocking on my apartment door to get in. Her dad was back to chasing her mom with a machete. Her mother back to hiding in a garden shed across the street to get away. Us kids back to watching the whole scene unfold from our murky second floor apartment. Like the shows we saw on TV, there was a good chance she would escape the bad guy. And as love, faith, what have you had it, just like the movie we snuck into last week, A Nightmare on Elm Street, her mother emerged with the blue and red lights of the police. She had blood all over her, but she was alive. The final girl, she survived. But like all survival stories, there was a cost. That same night, Chubala and I fell asleep in my tiny twin bed together, but when I woke up, she was gone. My mother and I went to her apartment. They took only the clothes on their backs, the blanket her grandmother sent from the reservation, and a Connect Four we used to share. Their home was still in place, like a dollhouse I wanted. Even the sink had dirty dishes. But they were gone. They never came back. Years have passed and the garden shed across the street still has red spray across it. From the apartment, you could swear it was spray paint, a miserable work of art. Okay. I'm gonna read a couple more, and then if we have time, I'll read one more, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Sound good? Yeah. We will not kill anyone's words. We have a chance to shop and enjoy. Thank you for coming. This is from a series I did called Adventure with You and How, and it's about coming out in the 90s. And this is number four. In 1997, you read in a bar on the border of the Mission and Folsom in San Francisco. You read with a group of women everyone wants to sleep with but are secretly scared of. You will notice by now, people might even say you fit in. You make friends by telling your sad truth, only you are not sad. You are alive. And the truth is whatever you say it is. And if it sets you free, fine. And if it only exists in a story, then at least you try. 
Every show and reading, show and reading feels this way because it is still safe, still safe to be wild and free and young. These things don't cost much money yet. Of course, you take them for granted. The bar is now gone. You look at the cream and beige condos now standing. Once, it was dark and lovely. You climbed up an illegal smoky staircase. You stood on a pool table and read at the top of your lungs to a room so full it was spilling onto the streets and out of the windows was hot wax running down the side of your hand. Once, it was over. And there was clapping and thunder and so much noise for more, more, give us more. Once you are enough. And San Francisco was a beautiful, crooked place that let you be clumsy. You can't afford these condos, but never let them tell you that you didn't live here. This is my last poem. My father passed away last year from cancer. And this book is dedicated to my pop, Edward Ernest Pinales. And um, it's, um, it's just a really, I, I wanted to end this with just a really simple, delicate poem. I think that's how good dads are, those good dad things to say. And I just compiled them. And, you know, when someone's gone, that's all you have, right? So this is called Grace. My father used to tell me there are things worse than this. There is disease and heartbreak. There is sadness, desperation, and somewhere, somebody ruined a birthday cake or ate the last cookie. There is loneliness and war and flames all the time. There is a side of the bed that's cold, someone who has no bed, someone who has no one to miss. There is never writing home, not having a home, forgetting the way home through memory, blood, and dreams. There is fear of bombs, sharks, planes, snakes, and highways. There is loving too much, not loving enough, loving the wrong way, never loving. There is loss. There is locking the keys in the car, forgetting when you park the car, living in a car. There is a long day, a day that never comes, a day that came too soon, a day no one remembers or looks forward to. There is grief, resentment, and sore losers. There is losing over, over. Losing the mind, heart, favorite shirt, the lottery, only person you trusted, lucky underwear, a photograph of a girl you once were, taken by someone who thought you'd be famous. Hope, soul, cracks through fingers, never tasting ice cream or knowing a first kiss could be worse, Pop say. Could be. Even in a thick winter night, a night when I still can't forget you and all the reasons were wrong for each other, all the ways you knew how to touch me, all the nights you wrapped yourself around me like a goat or a sonnet. Even now, I find myself feeling thankful. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. I really appreciate it. Thank you all for your beautiful brains for giving me this energy. It feels so good to read in here. Please stay, enjoy, fill this space. Okay, this space, this space deserves love. Look at this beautiful ofrenda. It's absolutely gorgeous. Oh, sorry. It's just absolutely gorgeous just seeing all the magic books. Um, but thank you so much. The book is available here at the Pop Hop, and it's also available online. Thank you. Ruth to the universe. Also, my partner is yours, Jenny Chain. Yep. Making tonight happen as well. Um, thank you so much. One more. <laughs> Ken, so do you have some more. art to show us? No. Oh, not really. this but this was the last thing that you said. Yes. <gasps> Thank you. Oh my gosh, I love it. I absolutely love it. I, wish, I feel like it's me if I were an abstract <laughs> <laughs> Can we show it to the screen? Sure. Here we go. <laughs> Can we show it to the screen? Yes. Hi. Art by Kenzo. <laughs> I forget that we're live streaming this. <laughs> Hi, Internet. Thank you, everybody. Please make yourselves at home. Take a look around the store. There's also a restroom right here. Yeah. 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 Yeah.